because it is Division I National Championship Week. Lincoln, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Uh, I'm going to be heading to Wisconsin myself as well, not for Division One, for Division Three, but it's just a, it's going to be a great weekend in Wisconsin, regardless of which championship you're going to be attending. Very exciting. And we are joined by a group of guys that's going to join us in Madison. Yes. The surprise uh, entrance out of Bradley. <laughs> they were second in the Midwest. We're pleased to be joined by Will Anderson, Jake Hoffert, and Michael Ward. Guys, thanks for coming on. How you doing? Yeah, pretty good, thank you. Yeah, no bad. Thanks for having us. So we were shocked. We were surprised by your second place finish at the Midwest. We were sitting at this very desk as the results came in. But were you guys surprised by that national championship uh, berth? Yeah. Um, I don't – we – much as most people, um, we kind of – we had this feeling kind of all season. Like we knew what we were capable of. Uh, we were missing two of our top five guys at Nutty Comb, so we didn't have like a great showing there. Um, but we were able to – bring it all together for that regional meet. And Jake, what was it like celebrating a program milestone on your guys' home course? Do you feel like you had a little bit of an edge because you were racing uh, a course that you guys were, were familiar with? Uh, yeah, I think it just made it that much better knowing we're at home, knowing we had so much support out there for us. And it just made it a lot more exciting that everybody could be there to celebrate with us as it was happening. And also, just during the race, to hear everybody say how we were doing during the race, I think it was more surprising 4 to 5K and when they knew what position we were in uh, than it actually was after the race. And, Michael, this is, the, this is the first time for the team, but you've been to this meet before, correct? So you've already gone down this road. Has it been difficult as a group to, to come down from that high of qualifying, I saw you guys are on the front page of newspapers. You're getting a lot of attention. Has that been difficult to refocus this week? Uh, I mean, obviously initially, but the day after, we were still overwhelmed and uh, you know, it, it was and enjoy it. But now, like myself and Jake made it before as well, so we kind of like using our kind of expertise to kind of just ground the guys a little bit. You know, even if we still have a week. And, we still got Yes, we made it. Now we want to establish us on the level. So that's what we're doing. I think everyone's ready to go. And yeah, obviously, we got media coverage like this today. But no, we're good. Heads are clear. And we know, we know what needs to be done. And guys, uh, exp explain to me, like, what is Coach you know, Gossin done for this team. He's just been the, the coach for the last four years. Obviously, that's been within your time uh, in the program, but he's elevated it seemingly just since day one since he got there. What what value does he bring to the team a, as a coach? So, I mean, he came in like sophomore year, your guys' freshman year, mm -hmm. and with that, he just he just brought in this level of professionalism and really just this belief in all of us that you know we. If we keep doing what we need to do, you keep you guys trusting me, and we work together as a team, we will get where we want to be. And I, I think this year, um, I was really, really happy for him to, to get that uh, Midwest Coach of the Year award. I, I think he deserves it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's he's been a credit to this program and where where we are, uh, where we've come. Some people may not know, but you guys are located in Peoria, Illinois, there in Bradley. Um, What's it like training in Peoria? It can be a cold part of the country, of course, and uh, maybe maybe not the most glamorous city in the world. It's not Chicago, it's not LA, but, but what's it like in Peoria? Um, it's pretty much just kind of like a like a classic Midwestern town. I know we're we heard we're a test market for like a not a lot of new products because we just kind of encompass like all sorts of people and all <laughs> sorts of nice of people and like. You know, it's it's nothing crazy. I'm I'm from like just local Indianapolis area, so it's not quite as like city downtown as that, but it's not a bad place at all. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's kind of a bit of a culture shock from 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 Wales across the pond um, to then Peoria. Uh, kind of didn't really appreciate the scale. When people talk about Chicago. I was like, oh, awesome, that'd be on the road, but not the case at all. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think one thing to benefit from here is uh, just. Yeah, the weather might be harsh, we have not luck. Got it. And uh, what, what, what do you guys think the race plan will be for you? Uh, sorry. 
what do you think the race will be like? Race plan for, will be like for you guys at, at NCAA is your first time as a team. Have you talked much about that yet? I mean, how how will you approach the race? Can you uh, repeat the question, please? It was breaking up a lot. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna ask like what your race plan is gonna be f going into NCAA's. Uh, I mean, yeah. originally. I remember right after the race, we had just talked about, you know, why don't we just go do something? And I think right now, it's, it's our first time, so any performance that we give is going to be a first. But at the same time, we don't want to go out there and just do media. We want to be our best. And I think that all of us are trying to go for a certain space, but at the same time, placement is arbitrary since every one of us been so interchangeable with each other throughout the whole season and I think overall as a team we're just trying to go out there and do something that nobody really expects and if we could go out there and get I don't know what you, I mean we talked about maybe possibly getting top 20 and that that would be ecstatic with that and I mean that's kind of our overall goal right now yeah, I think for us, it's kind of just our, our strength comes in our pack. I think our depth has showed this year, as Jake said, kind of our front runners kind of been interchangeable over the races. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, if, if, if we all stick on the day, then we don't really have to do anything necessary. Like, I think one, one thing is that's good for us is that as long as we don't um, run poorly, we should be okay. You know, I guess that goes for everyone. But uh, yeah, if we pick on the day, we, we think we could do, do something special. So I guess we'll just have to, have to wait and see. We heard a little bit about you guys' red shirting last year, a couple of your team members, a couple of the key members red shirting with the idea, I think, that you kind of could go all in this year and this year would be your shot to qualify. Can, can one of you guys explain the, the thinking behind that? So myself and Will mm -hmm. and Harren were the two guys that, that red shirted. And yeah, I think. Just coach goals um, just kind of kind of how the division would play out and experience and how we could uh, kind of benefit with the next year of training. And with that, he kind of said, just instead of kind of two years somewhat knocking on the door, let's just all put, you know, put our chips in a one and just go for it and try and smash the door down. And yeah, it's paid off. and. <laughs> And be more happy right our highest finish before was fifth and so i think it just taken that that year gap they were able to get six last year with the three red shirts and just come back this year put it ready to go get that second place was it tough though to sit out last year and like watch i mean i'm assuming you guys were all you know healthy at that point was it tough just to like watch it watch it go by yeah i trained for the half marathon the <laughs> the whole summer and in the fall and so that kind of kept my mind out of it a little bit. It was kind of a nice mix up, but it, it was tough to not contribute, especially when we tied at conference and won off a tiebreaker. And so we almost almost yeah. uh, didn't get the MVC dub last year. So that was that was tough. But yeah. it was also uh, it was also nice to felt like it gave uh, you know we really want to embrace kind of the team spirit and team culture here. So. Uh, just kind of red in some of us, kind of allowed some other guys to step up to play and just really just boost our depth, which has helped this year as well. Just uh, kind of make sure the guys stay honest in their training and stay stay focused. And yeah, it, it worked out. Aside from the business at hand of the actual race, is there anything in the next couple of days you guys are really excited for? Going into Blaze for the first time, of course, it's an experience. There's the blue carpet pre-race festivities, maybe the celebration afterwards. What are you most excited for, aside from the race? Um, I think, for me, um, imagine you agree, Jake, going kind of individually. Um, we didn't see the point last time to go to the banquet, so um, this year I'm really looking forward to the, the banquet before with the, with the guys, you know, trying try to look sharp for the day. And, and yeah, just, just look forward to that. Thing. Well, what is looking sharp? What does that mean? What you got tuxedos or what, what's what's going on there? Yeah, no, we just uh, make sure that the hair's looking good and <laughs> got a on and stuff like that. You know, just just make sure <laughs> our presence is known. Do you guys have a best dressed on the team? Like somebody that shows up, everybody else? Scotty. Scott. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, pretty boy has. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple. Like we we got some boys. Who, would like to look good, so yeah. I'm a sweatpants guy, so none, stuff, of, none of them are really on the team ball, but uh, 
I, I prefer comfort over the stress. <laughs> Well, I, I'm curious who has the best mustache going right now. I see three of you guys there. Are all seven going to be going to have mustaches on the line? Yeah. I think it I mean, depends what you mean by best, best mustache. Yeah. <laughs> least, least worst. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's where I'm at too. Don't worry. Yeah. Mikey's got a pretty good yeah. mustache. Mine's yeah. pretty. Yeah. You know, we have uh, pretty like pretty Aaron and uh, Alex, uh, pretty fair lads, and they have um, blonde hair, so they've been dyeing theirs black. Oh wow! So, wow. Out, so mm -hmm. that's that was a nice sight. Um, wow. Other than that, yeah. I mean, it's just, it just has to be done. It's a tough one. <laughs> it, it is. You, you guys earned this, not just with the running, but with the commitment to the mustache. Yeah. Like dying. How, how long have those ones been going that you guys got right now? Months? Weeks? Before, like two weeks before conference. So, like mid September. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah. A couple of days. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Facial hair. Yeah. 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 Took us a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, I mean, obviously it's going to be cold, so there could be some frost in the mustache um, in Madison. Are you guys rooting just for like the, I'm assuming because of Peoria, the bad weather, are you guys, you know, rooting for like the worst possible weather, the toughest Midwestern type weather you can get? Yeah, I mean, it would pretty happy that it's in the Midwest this year. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and every time it's been muddy and Old, it's, it's gone in our favor with yeah. regionals and then classics. So, uh, yeah, I think that kind of Midwest training in harsh weather just helps on race day and just kind of toughen it out. And um, mm -hmm. we take we take great pride in our strength of the team and our strength in the pack. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's uh, it's a little bit harsher conditions yeah. and my, uh, some teams might buckle underneath that, but that'll, that'll do be good for us. I like the slot. I like yeah. A lot of mud. That's good for us. Do you guys have one particular team that you said you would think like, hey, if we beat them, we did it. We did a really good, good job at, at nationals. There's like one team, obviously like NAU. Maybe maybe <laughs> we won't put you up there just yet, but anything can happen. But is there one team that you're like, we really want to beat them this weekend? Uh, no, I don't. Th I think at this stage we haven't really looked into it as in depth as that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, right now it's kind of just. I think everyone, everyone's just kind of free game right now. We just, we just want to see as high as we can place up right now. Uh, I'm sure close to the time, Coach Dawson, he always has his uh, strategy. So we you know, have some teams to mark, but as of right now, no. It's always nice to beat teams from the local regions to just kind of show, like, you know, the the local recruits and everyone, like what we're all about and what we bring to the table. So I think that would be a good, mm -hmm. a good like, group of teams. Well, you guys, earlier in the year, at that Nettycomb race that you, you mentioned, you, you beat, or you lost Oklahoma State, um, and you, get, you beat them. You beat them at region. I mean, Oklahoma State's a team that's won a whole bunch of national titles. I don't know if they ran all of their top five, but they ran a lot of their top five. That, yeah. that had to feel good, right, to beat Oklahoma State? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, when I came in freshman year, I, I remember Oklahoma and Oklahoma State were just uh, how it is so long. And I think I saw a stat the other day that 2011, we were like, in the region, so mm. to out and beat those teams. Uh, I think you know, even even beat Tulsa. Tulsa run really well this year, and um, for us to kind of beat those kind of two teams just just shows kind of what this program is and what we can achieve. And Michael, you're you're from Wales, correct? Correct. So so the NCAA obviously very international. You have great runners from Canada, Australia, Kenya, Rwanda. Like, where are the Wales power rankings? Where do you fit among the top, like, Welsh cross-country runners this year? Are you, are you near the top? Is it just you? Welsh cross-country runners? I mean, you, I say at the top is Debbie Griffiths. Um, recently, he's been doing a lot on the roads. He's uh, 213. Two yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, but yeah. uh, recently, kind of, the uh, Welsh standard has been getting really good, um, I think. Kind of Scotland leading the way right now, but yeah, Welsh rankings. We've got some great kind of young talent coming up. Uh, I got back home when I trained with Jake Hayward. He's uh, 18, 18, and uh, he just ran 236 this year. But um, and he recently just won a cross country race out in Spain. So, yeah, but in the yeah. NCAA, but in the NCAA, is it just you? Oh, in NCAA. Um, yeah, right now, I mean. Yeah, I can't. Don't be modest. I mean, if it's you, just say, I'm, I'm carrying the flag for Wales. There's, there's, there's 
uh, Matty Edwards, he's at um, Belmont. Uh, this Jack Gooch, he's at Lamar. Uh, Jack Hopkins is at Iona. But yeah, in terms of, in terms of the Welsh right now, I'm, I'm trying to think who at, at nationals. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's going to be any at the Welsh internationals there. Um, take it. You there take you go. It. Yeah, you got the title work. already. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, uh, thank you so much, guys, uh, for joining us. Will Anderson, uh, Jay Coffer, and Michael Ward from Bradley. The Cinderella story, a sleeper out of the Midwest. Keep an eye on them. They'll be racing Madison. We will, uh, we'll see you guys there in a couple of days. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, yeah, guys. Right. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks for having Absolutely. us. See you in a couple of days. You Bye. got it. All right. Thank you very much to our guest there from Bradley. Bradley. Lincoln, I mean, that's what makes the NCAA meet so interesting. You mentioned how Colos and Regionals Week was your favorite week. Yes, I because, do love because it. Of, because of the surprises, and it's sort of embodied right there in that, in that group. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that they were talking about when, like Michael Ward was talking about when he first, like looking back at the Bradley history in 2011, like the years that Oklahoma State was running that region and running nationals as well, Bradley was 20th in that region. And it just speaks to what Coach Gossin has done and elevated that program. They're recruiting internationally. Now they're starting to get some of the top Midwest guys. This is this is huge year for them. Obviously, they make it to nationals for the first time, but then recruiting down the road. Right. I mean, this could establish them as, as a force in the Midwest for years to come. So big, big props to those guys. Their mustaches especially. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I'm looking forward to see what they can do at nationals. All sorts of storylines coming out of regionals. That yes. was just one of them. Yeah. Uh, let's shift our focus to talk about how those storylines will impact the NCAAs. Okay. You know, oftentimes we get ahead of ourselves. We see someone or some team have a great race at NCAAs. And then we're quick to give them the national championship too yes. soon. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or we're quick to bury a team. So I have three scenarios here, three takeaways from regionals. I want you to tell me, is it reality or is this a sure. regional overreaction? Yeah, of course. Which is patent pending on my end. <laughs> First one. Okay. Here we go. Ha New Mexico has solved their fifth runner problem. Reality or overreaction? Yeah. I'm going to go with an overreaction. It's a regional overreaction if it's your patented move there. I realize that they have a super elite top two, and so they had the w regional winner there in Wine Kaladi, but they were still, their, their fifth was still over a minute plus behind Kaladi. I'm just not gonna believe it after one regional race, especially when you talk about Colorado didn't run as hard as they could. And you have to imagine New Mexico's fifth, Sophie Eckel, I believe, or maybe it was Emily Martin. It was Emily Martin this week. Yes. They've had three different fives this year. So I, I value Gordon's point that they can have multiple ladies step into that role, but I just think I, I don't see one of their fifths finishing in the top 100. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen this year. So I'm not going to believe it off for one race. You always have to take regionals with a grain of salt. And since they were still over a minute behind, I, I, I just don't think that gap is going to lend itself well to them uh, repeating as national champions. Overreaction. La so last year, the gap one to five at nationals was 77 seconds. Okay. And, I think I that, mean, well, and they, only, they won by 15 points, yeah. which, okay, that's not one point, but 15 points. Like, if that gap was, instead of 70 seconds, 77 seconds was 97 seconds, yeah. there's probably 15 points there. Oh, of course. And, yeah, of course, a, a minute doesn't sound that bad when you put it on the standard of NCAAs. But this was regionals where, again, Colorado was, yeah. was trotting out there. So you don't want to – I mean, may, maybe New Mexico was holding back as well. They knew they were going to qualify. But I, I still think that fifth is going to give them trouble, and I don't think they have that figured out yet. Yeah, I think, I think 80 seconds is the – the cutoff, the, the, the cutoff, right? Yeah, anything, yeah. anything under eighty, and I, it's skewed a little bit because Kaladi is going to run so fast yeah. at nationals. However, I think a ninety-second gap that gets scary. It that, does. That gets scary. It really does. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I don't think it gets scary. I think it's just that, that's that's probably it for them. And who knows what Coach Joe Franklin's thinking? Uh, but but you can pretty much write out how they're going to perform. There's really uh, uh, there's not a lot of question marks for the top three. Like we yeah. pretty much know. That Kaladi and Kurgat are being going to be in the top five. Yeah, Prowse is probably going to be in the top fifteen. Cohen, we just don't know. She's been running better, so maybe we can book her for a top fifty finish. After that, though, it, who knows? You know. All right. So. Second takeaway here yes. from regionals: the Washington men are a podium contender. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we we thought that Washington would take off with Andy Powell coming in, and that's what they've done. And, and I'm going to say that is reality. The Washington men. They basically have like three number one guys. I mean, they've had so much. They've had. They've had. Uh, last week they had Tanner Anderson, their mm -hmm. Oregon transfer, who's nearly been an All American in the past. I think he was forty first last year. They had Talon Hole, who mm -hmm. was second. Ne I mean, we could say nearly outkicked Grant Fisher at almost surprised Grant Fisher at Pac 12s Thibodeau Proctor's 
has run well for them. Fred Huxham, they have the pieces mm -hmm. to make a run. They were only five points behind Portland at regionals. I know it's regionals, but still, they beat Boise State. They beat Stanford. Well, Stanford literally just walked <laughs> yeah. during during regionals. <laughs> Gotta but, respect that move. But, 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 they Washington has the guys to, to get a podium finish done. I mean, you have to factor, okay, there's, there's six or seven teams in the mix. A couple of those will just have awful days, and it could be Washington, but yeah. they, they are absolutely contenders. They have the guys that can get it done. Uh, they, they'll need a couple guys to step up and be, you know, top 20 guys, maybe just maybe just one or two, but 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 they, they can certainly do that on a really good day. Yeah, I think they could get fourth. It's a reality there. Uh -huh. Number three, the men's individual champion could come from outside our previously named Big Six, which included Grant yeah. Fisher, Morgan McDonald, Tyler Day, Matt Baxter, James Segura, and Edward Kurgot. Yeah. So do you think that reality or overreaction that it could come from outside those six? I'll call it an overreaction, and I think the guy we've really wanted to focus on has been Nick Hagar from, from Portland, who has been running out of his mind the last couple weeks. He won West Regional. Not a big deal, but he looked very, very strong. The bigger one was he, he, he ran well and won the West Coast Conference. I believe he ran really solid at Nutty Comb as well. I think he was top mm -hmm. 10, uh, and he was an All-American last year, I think, in the 20s. He's been running really, really well. I just I think it's an overreaction to think he can he can compete with the the, the the tried and true guys that have been in the top five before McDonald, Fisher, Day, Baxter. I, I just I don't think that I think it's an overreaction to think he's on their level. At, um, Do you at, think six at, at guys can win it though? Do you agree with that six, or would you draw the line somewhere else? No, I, I think that's that's right. Who it is? I I would honestly toss out Segura from that that list. I I in in. I mean, my opinion is it's a, well, it's, yeah, a it's, it's a yeah right. I mean, my my it, it's a four man race. It's McDonald, it's Fisher, it's the Tuberman AU. That's, Interesting. Okay. That's, I, so I, you disagree with the big six then? Yeah, I don't think. I mean, Kurgot, I, I suppose, is a little under underrated, but and I know he was close at Nuttycomb and he had right. a good run last year. But I, again, I, I don't see him being a guy that has he been. I mean, he hasn't been tested this year other than running at Nuttycomb. I mean, we don't know yeah. where his fitness truly is. Yes, he dominated Big Twelves. Who cares? He dominated. Uh, Midwest. You know, Midwest, sorry, Bradley, but who cares? Yeah. Uh, he, 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 let's see him face these guys over 10K. I, I don't buy that he's a top five guy. I mean, or a top, I, top, a guy contending for a yeah, title. Yeah, but just on his I disagree with you there. Just on his basis of that nutty cone finish alone. I mean, mm -hmm. he was right, right there with him. I don't think he peaked that early. I think, yeah. I think he'll be in there. You can maybe convince me Segura, but Segura's just interesting because such a wild card. You mm -hmm. know, but has a ton of international experience. Just a redshirt what? freshman. Why does it seem like we're not talking about? I mean, I realize Baxter like hasn't dominated this season, hasn't won a bunch of races like McDonald or or Fisher, but Baxter literally finished like this far behind Justin Knight last year. It doesn't seem like he gets enough. Well, and Day finished this far behind Fisher at. at I know. Too. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. just like neither of them do because I think that's overwhelmed by the team title talk. Yeah. And I think it's just I tried to thread that needle uh, in, in the preview that's up on the site right now. People can watch. Um, I spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. <laughs> really poor my heart. He really and soul. did. He really uh, did. Uh, I try to thread that needle of like these guys are individual title contenders, mm -hmm. and they're also what makes NAU such a potent team threat. Yeah, it, it kind of—I I don't want to say they're indifferent in the individual title, but it's such Day and Baxter are just so focused on being those those low sticks for them. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe truthfully, they don't quite have the kicks of McDonald and Fisher. They don't have that advantage of being on the home course like McDonald and 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 the, maybe the finishing speed of Fisher. But they're not too far off. Yeah, and they both beat him last year. Uh, that's Baxter and Day. But I know Fisher didn't. You know, he kind of regretted that holding back a little bit. Yeah. But he's not going to do that this year. But I still think we, we Baxter and Day, could, could one of them could win the title. Because Baxter and Day aren't going to put themselves out of the race. Because their mm -hmm. best path is to go hard. It, out of those beginning. six that you, you've you listed here, again, the rehash, McDonald, Fisher, Day, Baxter, Segura, and Kerr got Segura, if you're not familiar, on Eastern Kentucky, kind of a newcomer on the scene. Who do you think's taking it out? I mean, somebody's somebody's gonna want to do it. You oh, think I, it, you know, I, you guys. Yeah, with Kurgat. Yeah, I think McDonald and Fisher are gonna wait and wait, and wait. It's gonna mm -hmm. be like a track race mm -hmm. almost, and they're gonna be the kickers, and the race is gonna be fascinating to see if Day and Baxter can just grind them all down, mm -hmm. or, or even Kurgat can grind them all down. That last two K, you know, obviously that's gonna be critical. I, I know times don't really matter, but I'm gonna be curious what the winning time is to, mm -hmm. and like how close it is to 29 minutes because they've been running. I just think that will tell part of the story too. The sure. winning time, if it's if it's like it was a few years ago with Edward Cheserek, where everyone ran like thirty minutes and it was jog, uh, you know that that's advantage. that that would be surprised because well, and that's advantage. A, that's advantage for sure. McDonald, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's play a game, cool. Lincoln. Let's talk about bellwethers here. If I didn't let you 
see any of the results except for one person. Oh, so okay. you're allowed to see one person. And from that person, you had to predict your know, team standings. Who would you pick? You know, in other words, who's the one who has the greatest sway, the most influence, we could say, over the rest of the field? Sure. Yeah, there's a number of ways I could have gone with this one. I chose Rory Linkletter because his 39th place finish last year kind of seemed to tell the story of BYU's uh, disappointing day there in Louisville in 2017. He was a guy after winning pre-nationals, thought he could be a top 10 guy. Well, guess what? The story's the same this year. He won pre-nats. I know there were two races, but he won the white race, kicked really strong at the end. And he's a guy now we have ranked in the top 10. He, to me, um, you know, in a, or excuse me, BYU's top guys, they don't feel quite at that level or don't have that national championship top five, obviously, experience like, like NAU do, does. But a top, if, he, if, we're, ugh, if Linkletter is up there with those guys, if he's anywhere close in the top 10, that tells me that BYU is going to be having a good day. Because I feel like McMillan's solid. Mance, despite being a freshman, it, it, well, he, Mance will take it out too. That's another one who will take yeah, it out with Dan Baxter. Watch. Mance, I, I, I think, will be you know an All American, who knows where. But I, I, Linkletter needs to be their low stick, and and his performance will tell me if BYU's having a good day or not. That's a good one. I went to the I went on the women's side of things, but for the men, I would also throw in there you know someone like Luis Grijalva for NAU because he seems to bridge that gap sure. between Day and Baxter, Lamong, and then that. Four, five, six, well, and we, or three, four, five. We spend I mean, so much time talking about Baxter and Day. Of course, you know, Grijalva, Lamong, and whoever it is, Jordy Beamish, uh, Farrow, or who else, uh, you know, uh, they have to be there as well. So yeah. you're right. Grijalva's a huge, huge piece. So my, my, my selection, Veronica Pizek mm -hmm. for Oregon. So in the women's race, keep your eye on Pizek. I think she could be a bellwether runner. You see there, second from left, with the name Veronica Pizek on her shirt. Mm. Fifth at this meet last year. She was Oregon's number two runner at Pac-12s and their number three runner at regionals behind Ijore. If she's anywhere near the form she was in last year, I think Oregon's in great position. You know, she's able to, to she doesn't need to be the number one. So the pressure's off. Jessica yeah. Hull has assumed that role and has been fantastic. Susan Ijore's running out of her mind. Absolutely. And then if you have Pizek there in the two or three spot, but a very, very, you know, solid finish, a top 15 type finish, then you just need two of... You know, Bowden, Baez, Brower, yeah. Garrick to, to come through. And Bowden, sorry, Brower is someone who was in the 20s last year, All American, yeah. and she's Oregon's five this year. Yeah. So if Oregon's Loaded. five obviously is in the 20s, then turn out the lights, the party's over. But I think <laughs> Pizek just has that ability to kind of pull everybody else sure. with her. And I don't think, I don't see her running like an outlier race. I don't see her getting eighth and then Oregon's next runner coming in yeah. like 35th. I just think they're all kind of yeah. clustered together and if she's if she's close to Hull, then then Oregon's going to win. And, and my only concern with Oregon is all of their really, really good performances this year have been in very, very nice weather. And then mm, they the weather to, angle, I like it. The, they came to Wisconsin and kind of laid an egg. I mean, speaking of Pizek, she wasn't she wasn't great. I mean, she was 12th, all right, yeah. I think, in, in pre-nats in, in one of the, I, I believe, the Cardinal race. Mm -hmm. But for her, that's not very good. So I, I'm concerned because the Ducks have been running, and, and, you know, they ran at Stanford. They ran last week at Sacramento. They're going to come into a freezing cold environment. A month ago, they didn't run well when it was – you know, not even as cold as this. I'm, I I really think they're going to have problems with the weather. Um, it's been cold in Oregon. I see you look that up right now. Well, right it's now it's 48 chilly. degrees as we record. 48 I, degrees. I just, I just, they've just run. To, you see that, that picture of them? They're smiling in bright sunshine. Looks like they're out at the beach in, in June. Yeah. I, I just, I, they got beat by Arkansas when it was cold. It's going to be even colder this year. Are we suddenly going to believe that they're going to, you know, step up? At, yeah, I, I don't think so. That's well, the, my opinion. Well, the pre-Nats key was Azure because she was 61st mm -hmm. at pre-Nats, yeah. inexplicably 61st. And then she went from that to third in the West region where yeah. they were running that pretty hard. So mm -hmm. she was behind Ali Ostrander and uh, her teammate Hull. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she's just been on another level. And she was really great in the beginning of the year. And then it was just that one trip to Madison where, where she didn't really run that that well. But True. basically, Oregon has a lot of options of okay. ways to get to you know a score a score under a hundred. Uh, not many other teams have that same option. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Especially yeah. if you're talking about um, someone like a a New Mexico who you know for sure like they're gonna have a big number yeah. at, at the back part of that lineup. Yeah, of course. All right, let's close out. Let's do some picks. You're gonna be at the D three championship, so you're not gonna get a chance to make picks live on the <laughs> show. True. You're not going to chance to make D1 picks live on the show. So would you like to do it sure. now and let the people know? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go with the men first. Or no, we'll do ladies first. And we've, I've, been, I've been told to, to do that here on this show. So uh, 
I've, I've said I like Boise State women all year long. I love it that they're ranked sixth. I love it that they're, I've seen on social media at least one of their athletes kind of feisty about the fact that they're ranked sixth. I love the five they have. Ali Osherner looked fantastic last week. I don't know if it was a full 6K course, but she blitzed like a 1908. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? She's super, super fit. I mean, I don't. I guess I don't love that she ran that hard the week before nationals, but Ali Osherner is going to be in the top 10. They've got low sticks there also as well, and Emily Venters, Claire O'Brien. And uh, Maxine Poholnik is has been running well I, I, as well. I, I forget their their fifth runner, but Fuller, Alexis Fuller, Fuller, Fuller yeah, Fuller. Fuller. Actually, yeah. Uh, I, I think they have the best five in the country, uh, and and I, I know Oregon's right there. But again, I've got my solid Oregon can't run in cold weather take. It's already <laughs> it's already there. So what's the weather in Boise? I, I I like Boise State to score the upset. I don't trust New Mexico's fifth. For Colorado, Sage Herda is a question mark. She didn't run at regionals, and she had a poor day at Pac-12s. Arkansas, I don't think they have the pieces to put it to, to you know, go all the way. I, I just I like Boise State. I think I'm missing a team there. Uh, uh, Villanova. Villanova. Villanova, I just haven't seen enough of them. I, I don't Well, they've been know. below the radar. They're, I mean, I guess the argument for or against, depending on how you're looking at two freshmen at the backs mm -hmm. have their lineup four and five. Uh, okay, so individually you have... Oh, uh, Kaladi for sure. Yeah, you can. I think that's. I'm the most confident of that of any other pick. Uh, More confident than the men's team pick. Yeah, I mean, just similar similar amounts, and I'll go transition to my team pick. Obviously, Northern Arizona. I, we know the history. It's very difficult to three-peat. Uh, the last team to do it was Arkansas in the year 2000, as you highlight in that preview today. Um, so it's it's we've we've said this before. 2015. Oh, Colorado's going to three-peat. No problem. They didn't get it done. 2011. Uh, Oklahoma State's going to three-peat, no problem. Both those teams had five All-Americans coming back, and they couldn't get the job done. Northern Arizona's in a similar boat. You know, we think they're kind of impen impenetrable. That It could happen, but I, I just, they know this course. They've run so well. They're so consistent. I mean, the biggest thing, like Gordon has pointed out, they won 16 meets in a row. I mean, they yeah. don't, I don't see any kinks in their armor at all. I, yeah. They, you know, all their guys are solid. They go and get the job done. I think they're winning three in a row. Okay. What about and you? And... I'm saving my Oh, men's title. Grant I'm, Fisher. I'm saving mine for the show. Okay. But I'll say NAU. Okay. So. And Grant, I agree. Grant NAU Fisher picks. is my individual pick. Okay. This is his time. It, you know, should also, you could make that argument about Morgan McDonald. It's on everybody's home time, yeah. <laughs> but Grant Fisher, I, I think he, he may not admit this as much, but he's like a little extra pumped up this year to, to really get this cross country title. I mean, the guy was a two time footlocker champion. He wants a cross country title. I think his career. Thus far, while it's been good, has left a little bit of a sour taste in his mouth. He's going to be right there, and he's got the best kick. I, I'm picking Grant Fisher. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I like those. Yeah. Good explanation. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm still thinking of mine. Okay. I just want to give you the chance because you're not going to be – you're going to be an Oshkosh. So. I will be an Oshkosh. Freezing my butt off as well, but uh, D3, I'm excited for that as well, but we can talk much more about that. <laughs> D1's the big one, though, and, uh, man, check it out on the site, 8.45 a.m. Yeah, 8.45 on Saturday we go – with our two-hour live show, and then the women's race is at 10.45, also live from D3s Yes. <laughs> in Oshkosh, so you can check it all out. Two uh, browsers this you know, week. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Double box, double yeah. box. Thank you very much to our guests from Bradley who joined us today. Thank you, Lincoln. We will yeah. see you guys in Madison in a couple days.